Hey, well done, Greg. Well done. Um, thanks, guys, for being part. Let's just uh, dialogue with Greg a little bit here, if you don't mind. And uh, I'd like to start off with the question that Greg posed to us. As you see there in your notes, what do you hope to get out of this study? What do you, what, is there something specific that you're praying that you'll be able to implement in your life because the encouragement from Paul, uh, of course, Philippians, I know is a favorite book of many of us, uh, but um, any, any thoughts on what you're specifically looking for, what you're hoping the Lord will reveal to you uh, through this uh, dynamic 104 verses uh, that, uh, that Greg's only unpacked two of them, and I'm already encouraged. I know I'm already blessed. Um, let, me, let me give you something and is just to get the pot stirring here. I was reminded as Greg was speaking to a lesson that Dan Gertes gave uh, many, many months ago. And, and Dan told us the number of thoughts that go through our mind every day is about 6,200 thoughts a day. That's, you know, all kinds of things are hidden us. And, and the average person, 6,200 thoughts. And he, and he, he said that 80% of those thoughts are negative or anxiety centered. And so we got to work really hard, guys, to uh, with that flood of thoughts that are hitting us, you know, um, you know, obviously multiple thoughts per minute are hitting us. And the vast majority of our thoughts for the normal person is negative. And Paul, he could have easily been super negative with the circumstances in the middle of, with the peril, with the frustration, you know, the anxiety. And yet he chose, he chose joy. He chose joy and he is going to write to the Philippians and encourage them greatly. So uh, that's one of the things that struck me is, you know, what, what, what kind of things am I choosing to fill my mind with? What am I choosing to, to uh, uh, you know, focus on? And am I going to focus on the negative or focus on the positive? Am I going to focus on the Lord's grace and mercy or his... Or, or, or the situation I find myself in the middle of. And, you know, you know that in Philippians uh, 2, uh, verse 5, he says, have this attitude in yourself, which is also in Christ Jesus. So he's, he's saying, let's choose the attitude of Jesus. Let's choose joy. And so uh, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to is, is you know, really challenge myself. What, 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 what am I going to put in my mind? What am I, I going to put in my mind? Thoughts that you guys have, things you're looking forward to in the next uh, season here as we go through the book of, book of Philippians. Well, Rod, um, I remember the season Greg's talking about with the, the singles conferences and things. Back around 1992, 93, maybe 94, I memorized the book of Philippians. I had all four chapters memorized. Now, for me, when I memorize things, um, People tell me I can I, I can memorize. I don't really think I'm that good at it. For me, I just beat it up until I have it memorized. I go it over and over and over again. And so I'm memorizing Philippians. And I can't tell you on Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, how many times did I go over that? You know, yeah, that I know may him in the power of his resurrection, may share his suffering, becoming like him in his death. And so so I went over that. I don't know how many times. And finally, one day, I'm, I'm just skating through that. And it hit me like a ton of bricks, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, sharing his sufferings, becoming like him in his what? In his, I'm going to become like him in his death? And I, I'm telling you, I sit there, and I thought, I don't want that. I don't want to die. I certainly don't want to die a death like Jesus died. And that hit me hard. Now, the question becomes, I don't want to. If I had to, would I? I hope I would. I hope I'd be obedient and follow through and, 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 and uh, stick to the example that Christ gave. I'm just telling you the day I memorized that, that thing, pow, it hit me hard. What I was doing, I, 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 don't, I don't want that. But yeah, I hope if I have to, I'm willing to follow through. You know, that's, there's pretty powerful verses there, becoming like him in his death and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. That's just an incredibly... Yeah powerful passage he goes on down a couple of verses later i press on towards the goal to win the prize i press on i mean life is hard life sucks sometimes we gotta press on yeah you know we just do <clears throat> gotta find a way take that next step exert ourselves keep going keep keep moving ahead 
even when it's not pretty. Uh, but God's called us heavenward. We got to keep going. And in the verse 15, all of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too, God will make clear to you. Here's verse 16, which Christianity leads up to today, needs to live up to. Only let us live up to what we've already attained. You know, you've matured to this point. Stay there and keep moving. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the ramble. <laughs> no, you, hey, you, it is true. You, you are the memorizing king. <laughs> you are. And every one of those verses, I mean, I want to just start talking about every one of those verses. Uh, but, uh, but we will get to those. Those are great. Thanks, Steve. Rod, the, uh, the, uh, the word retransformation kind of popped into my mind this morning. Uh, get, this book should uh, re replace mundaneness mm -hmm. or habitual things that we just kind of get locked into each day with the joy. And uh, so it, it, you know, sometimes my face is a little too serious and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it should be a, I should smile more. Mm. The joy of Christ should radiate from me. Yeah. And my spirit always does. Yeah. So well, Jerry, I, yeah. Jerry, I can tell you, your, your face doesn't look like you've been trying to suck a lemon through a tailpipe like uh, <laughs> like a lot of deacons I've seen uh, over the years and all. So uh, <clears throat> you do look joyous, brother, but you, you're right, man. We We got a lot to be. We got a lot to rejoice over. Count our blessings, yeah. Amen. You know, I think about uh, you know, it's easy to complain and whine, and you know, and here, here's the honest: I don't want to grow up and become a grumpy old man. And you know, unfortunately, I see a lot of people as they age, they get cynical, they get kind of jaded, they get frustrated, they, you know, they've seen they, they've been hurt so many times, and they and they really they become a grumpy old man, and that's. That's not a good way to live life, guys. Right. Right. Consider the joy, the joy that we've been given uh, through Jesus. So, Jerry, well said. Thank you for your honesty on that. Rod, I don't appreciate you talking about me like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, one of the things that hit me out of this lesson, I've been trying to make a point of getting my mind under control. And several times now it's been mentioned how all these different thoughts come into our heads and a lot of them are negative and all that. A lot of them are like videos from the past that you've been trying to get out of your head forever. And uh, when you started talking about that and Paul's focus on Jesus Christ, it kind of reminds me that if I focus on that, it's going to be hard to think about the other things. Yeah. It's the old adage of if you want to get rid of a bad habit, make a new one, make a good one. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do is fill this lunk up here with the holes in it with enough Christ that nothing else has a chance to get in. And I know I won't reach that until he comes back for me, but I can work toward that to try to get my mind renewed, to get rid of those old habits and cover up those old tapes and not let them have room to grow like weeds. So this lesson is a conf confirmation for me of something that I've been working on, not doing exceptionally well at it, I'll admit that, but I am working on it. And uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'll be able to get better at it as I go along. Mm. But to be able to focus like Paul did and in the midst of beatings and abuse and neglect and friends turning it, what he thought were friends turning their backs on him. It, it's nice to see that somebody was able to do it well enough that I can use them for a pattern. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's one of the things that hit me out of this lesson. I want to renew my mind and make it more like Christ's mind. Here's a little more on the uh, overview of Philippians. This is Max Locato's writing. Paul's writing a letter here. No doubt it, it could be a complaint letter to God. No doubt a, it could be a list of grievances. No doubt he's writing the New Testament version of Lamentations. He has every reason to be bitter and complain, but he doesn't. Instead, he writes a letter that 2,000 years later is still known as the Treatise on Joy. Mm -hmm. 
good. I wish I had a way with words like Lucado. Yeah, he's uh, he's fairly gifted, isn't he? <laughs> he's pretty good. I still use his kids' books with my grandson. <laughs> he helped write one called Tell Me the Story. Mm. And I mean, it'll bring tears to an adult's eyes, some of those stories in there. Mm. Really good stuff. My sister attended his church uh, for, I don't know, six months to a year after her divorce, uh, just for something different. And uh, boy, she she loved it. She was blessed by uh, not only him, evidently, they've got some other gifted uh, communicators there as well, but yeah, he's good. Hey, Rod and Greg. Go for yes. it. Can you hear me? Yep, go for it, Steve. Um, I, uh, I continually look for ways to become more mature as a, as a Christian man. And uh, Philippians 3.16 is uh, really spoke to me about, you know, only let us live up to what we have already attained. Mm -hmm. And for me, being naturally, analytically curious. Okay, try it one more time. Oh, there that, we go. that we do not have to be sidetracked by an unending search for the truth. You know, like if we're if we're always searching, then we're not there yet. And so that's one of the things that speaks to me is that, that we don't have to be sidetracked by by unending searching for the truth. The truth is already there and we can fill our minds with that. So it, it's a it's a peace and a contentment that we already know the truth. You know, and for me, that really speaks volumes because I'm a natural analytical type person. I'll I'll pick something apart and I, I seem like I'm never there, you know, but that verse really speaks to me a lot. Mm -hmm. And and thank you, Greg, for this. Uh, it was uh, it was right what I needed today. And thank mm -hmm. you very much. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I uh, I. Um, you're around that passage of scripture and uh, Steve mentioned it. The other Steve mentioned it earlier too. Um, not that I've already obtained all this or have already been made perfect. And I don't remember who I heard it from, uh, but I made a note in my Bible years ago. I mean, it had to be over two decades ago. And I wrote in there where Paul says, not that I've already obtained all uh, this or I'm already or have already been made perfect, but I press on. I wrote, Paul was satisfied with Christ. He just wasn't satisfied with his own Christian life. He had what this pastor referred to as a sanctified dissatisfaction. In other words, he was always wanting to continue to grow to be more like Jesus. Until, like you said, Steve, until there's no more body, no more breath in this body or beating this heart. That's when we'll get to glory and we'll be glorified. But until then, our, 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 our goal should be to be more like Jesus every day. And so that's kind of, that's what I hear Paul saying in that kind of that latter half passage of chapter three is, Hey, I'm not there, uh, but I'm, I'm pressing on. I'm not looking at the things, you know, behind that's happened. I'm looking to what's ahead and, uh, when I think when we have that type of a mindset, um, we can we can handle all of life's circumstances and situations that it brings our way. So, yeah, good word, man. It's going to be fun. This is going to be fun, fun study. And it's going to be fun, I think, for each of us to encourage and challenge one another as well. Right, Philippians okay. 1, Philippians 1, 6 it ties beautifully with that as well. It says, for I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. And I've said this probably hundreds of times over the years, guys, this is not about perfection. It's about direction. Yes. And Paul has got us moving confidently forward, not because of our own skill set, but because of 
the Christ who resides in us. And he equips us, he encourages us. And Paul's going to just, he's, he's kind of like that guy behind us that's kind of got a hand in our back and just kind of, you can do this, come on, we're, we're walking together, we're journeying together, and this is not, never, not about you, it's about the, the Christ that's in you, and he's going to accomplish his good work for his good pleasure um, until the day that he, you know, comes to get us, calls us home. And that's the beautiful thing, Byron, you referenced, you know, we're on that journey. We're on that journey. We're, we'll never fully attain it, but we're heading the right direction. And that's what, that's what, that's what Paul's going to encourage us with. Anybody else got something for us? Hey, brother, I, I totally agree. I totally agree on that. Um, it's one of my foundational verses, uh, Philippians 1.6. And uh, I appreciate the fact that when Greg was going through this, how much God has used Philippians in my own life, just practically. You know, I think of Philippians 4, I think how practical that is about not being anxious and what my thoughts need to be pure. And, and, uh, and I think about uh, Philippians 2, 13, for his God in you, both to will and to work his good pleasure. So I'm excited to see what other verses God's going to help me to practically apply in my life and how much of it he's already put in my life. And mm-hmm. I appreciate that. It gives me much joy, actually, to know that God is in me both to will and to work his good pleasure. Mm-hmm. So good stuff. Hi, Greg. Greg's talk reinforced in me. Am I talking over somebody? Greg's talking reinforced in me the, the, the joy that Paul talked about while he was in prison being persecuted. And there, there are cultural and political things going on now that could in not too much longer lead to what you could call persecution for us Christians. But, but the last couple of months in particular, I have concentrated on the joy that I have and none of that stuff is going to take that joy away from me. Amen. Well, one thing I was thinking of was uh, the, uh, well, I've been talking to my brother recently, you know, and we can, you know, I guess we both are aware, more aware now that we're older, that maybe, you know, we know what the standard, you know, number of years most people live. So we're thinking, well, we may have a good, you know, 10, 15 years left. That's what we're thinking. And so, uh, one thing he's done is he's prepared better than I have. He started to buy his funeral plot and pay for his funeral ahead of time. He didn't want to be a burden on his family when they, when the time comes. He's kind of putting everything in order for when he passes away, you know. And I'm, I keep thinking, you know, here you go through your whole life, you know, and you're worried about, uh, <clears throat> am I going to be able to provide for my family? Am I going to have a family? Am I going to have a house? And you get, you get all these other concerns, and you go to, you might go to church, but I'm not really saying you. You do a lot of things that, that Paul does and, you know, talks about in Philippians. <clears throat> Sorry. So, uh, but I'm thinking, you know, even now with, you know, and, and we think when we talk about this, we're talking about uh, politics, COVID, all the changes in the world, you know, things we worry about. And, uh, but, but really this kind of thing really doesn't come up that much. I'm not sure it even comes up in our thoughts that much, but we got to, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, guys, 10 or 15 years. I may only have a year left. I don't know. You never know. I may only have a day left. But, uh, I, I, you know, if I had to go stand in front of, you know, face Jesus right now, he'd probably be saying, you know, I guess it's okay what you did, but you didn't really do a whole lot for me. You know, I asked you to do this and this, and you didn't do any of that. So it's taken off. I think it takes on more importance when you get, you get older. It should be important when you're younger, too. But, uh but you start to face your own mortality at some point, you know, you think, well, you know, if I, I do the average lifespan, I'm only going to live this long, you know? So, but it's, it's interesting. So I think, uh, you know, maybe what I'll get out of this study is if I want to focus more on this, uh, maybe it'll help me. The other thing is I'm a lot bolder now than I used to be when I was younger. There's no way I'd go out witnessing when I was younger, you know, I was too embarrassed to do that. But when you get to this age, it's kind of like, what are they going to do to me? You know, <laughs> you know, you get to that point. So, so anyways, I'm, I'm just thinking some thoughts like that, that, uh, 
you know, maybe now's the time to focus more on this. I've already focused my whole life on other things, you know, maybe this, maybe he's kind of pushing me to focus more on this now. Thanks, Carl. And like your shirt, I like your shirt. Good job. Way to represent. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to our pastor the other day. Um, we had a, uh, we had a service um, this weekend, unlike anything we've had in the 15 years he's been here, and unlike anything I've been involved in, in to be real honest, a, a long, long time. Um, but without going into the whole thing, the, the message that was preached and challenge that was given, there was a, you know, we extended an opportunity again, like we've never, we've never done this in the 15 years he'd been here to someone. If, if they, if they like the Philippian jailer, really, if they had come to Christ uh, that night, or maybe they just, they admitted that I have been a believer and I've just never followed through in believer's baptism, which is just a, you know, it, it, is, it is symbolic of, 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 you know, what took place on the cross, even Christ was, you know, dead and then raised again. And um, it's an act of obedience. We understand it that way, not as a part of salvation, but we offered that opportunity. And I had a, a young lady, a mother come up to me after the service. And she said, that's me. She said, I've been a believer for about 20 years, but I've never, I've never followed through in baptism. And I want to do that. She said, but I want my family here. I said, okay, I get that totally. She said, my kids are in the, the deal. I said, oh, your, it's your kids. And there, I said, can your husband go get the kids? She said, yeah. I said, okay. I said, the most important question I got to ask you though, before I send you to do that is, do you know that Jesus Christ lives in your life as your Lord and as your savior. And she said, absolutely. I said, then you can go get your kids. And uh, so we took her back and we had clothing and all that stuff. And I had an opportunity to baptize her. And it was a cool experience. And she told me this right before we went to the water. She said, I, I need to tell you this because it's a part of my story. And she said, you don't have to say anything about it. I just want you to kind of know. She said, I graduated in 1999 from Columbine High School. And I'm thinking in my head, isn't that the year that that happened? And it was. And turns out she knew, she knew who the, the killers were. She knew several of uh, those who were killed that day. And she said it really started her thinking. She went to MU from, from there to journalism school she said, I'm not a journalist. I'm a statistician now, but I went there for journalism. And uh, she said, I got involved in campus crew uh, crusade and other things like that. And she said, that was a part of my story, my coming to, to Christ. And as I was talking to my pastor later, I said, you know, we talk about getting to heaven and just desiring to hear God say, well done, mm -hmm. well done my good and faithful servant. And it hit me that there's a lot of people that are going to hear, well done. And then there's going to be a whole nother batch of people who are going to hear something akin to, well, you're done. <laughs> and I don't want to hear that. Yeah. And, and, and there's so many people and even friends and family. I don't want to hear that. And so Philippians, I hope is one of those books that does, give me not only uh, exceeding joy, uh, but will plant in me that mind of Christ to be a person who will be about the business of doing what Paul did and, and so many others in scripture, so many others today, uh, and even some that are on this call, have been on this call today, that live their lives for, you know, the, an audience of one. So... Thanks for hanging out. Hey, with that, let's go ahead and say goodbye. Gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, interacting with us. Have a blessed day, and uh, we'll see you.